Hello, so we are back. <laughs> ah, thanks for joining. We are back with Rita. So this time she's um going to be talking to us about the strategies she uses to train with the book. So Rita, I'll just let you go right into it. <laughs> Okay, thank you for joining us. Um, Bukola and I had a good discussion about who I train and, and how I do my work. I just wanted to provide some strategy. Uh, if someone's interested in using the book um, to either train or create discussion around human trafficking. And so um, here's what I have. The first thing will be to suggest that a facilitator, the person who's going to be doing the training, um, actually read the book. So that person wants to read the book so that they can guide discussions. Um, and why reading the book? They might want to make some notes in the book about um, certain situations and actions that's happening so that they can bring that up in the discussion. And then the second thing is to think about the number of people in your group. So if you are, if you have a class, you probably know what that number already is. Um, if you are starting from scratch and just inviting people, you might want to go ahead and invite and send your invitations uh, with a due date um, to cut off, um, so that you know for sure how many people will be in a discussion group. Um, I would suggest up to 10 people because that's a good number for um, discussions. Um, but no more than 14 probably because when you have a large group, it gets really difficult to facilitate. It's just too many people. So uh, good groups to do this with will be either a book club, um, a hobby club. So whether you do knitting or... Um, biking or whatever the hobby is, um, that's a good group to have a book discussion. Um, also church groups like women's group, men's group, youth group. Um, at this, when you're looking at youth group, you probably want teenagers, maybe 15 and older, um, because um, with the imprisoned book, there are some um, topics and some issues in there that are a little more um, adult kind of thing. So you want to get large, I mean, older kids. Um, community groups. Um, this does a lot of cultural practices and um, traditions in this book and is a great way to talk about that within a community. So after you read the book and you decided, you know, who's going to be in your group and how big the group is going to be, then you want to um, allow some time for reading. So I would suggest at least one week. This is a quick read uh, for avid readers. It can be a couple of hours. So like um, what would be the average hours? The average hours when reading a book, I would say it can take anywhere from one to four hours, okay. um, you know, depending on how fast the person reads. But on average, maybe two two, three hours. Um, but you want to give at least one week, depending, you know, people are busy and they have a lot of stuff going on. So set a date for your meeting or your discussion time. Um, you It's important. Well, it helps to provide discussion questions ahead of time. It just gives people enough time to really think about a question, and then have that in mind as they read. And that way your discussion can be a really rich one. Um, and then uh, number four, I would say decide on a focus of your discussion. So as you are going to be the person facilitating, do you want to um, focus on around awareness of human trafficking? So then you might have your questions around um, some of the, you know, identifying some situations in human trafficking, or it could be... Um, uh, you want to be, you want to focus on medical services. And then, you know, there's a nurse in there and some of the stuff she does or uh, what are some of the places people could go or how to seek services or help in those facilities. Um, and then, you know, it, it could be social services or it could be like community type um, help. So shelters. 
shelter yeah so community that's like women's, like like that's how women shelter exactly that's a great um Bukola is saying that um identify some services in the community where you can talk about yes. you know um the fact that you know Bukola sought out um services at a better women's mm-hmm. shelter so what kinds of places in our community you could come with a list of you know names of shelters and resources those kinds of things so it just helps with the discussion and then number five you want to actually conduct a group discussion so you have your meeting um, you get together uh, one thing I would say is the the topics um, the story itself is a very em- emotional one. The topic is an emotion. Mm-hmm. You know, it can mm-hmm. it can really um, bring up high emotions. You know, um, when you talk about family and you talk about culture and you talk about spousal relationships, those things are like really highly impacted, emotional kind of thing. So you want to be prepared for that. Um, and to create a safe space, you want to make sure you create a safe space by letting people know that you understand these could be some emotional things that you talk about today, um, how they can take care of themselves. Um, if something is a little too much for them, that is okay if they want to step out of the room or, you know, excuse themselves, those kind of things. Um, it helps to have rules of engagement or group agreements, like how are we going to have this discussion? You know, we might have people disagreeing about certain things. How do we handle that? Um, You know, do we want one person to talk at a time? Do we want to go around the room in a circle and have everybody give their, their, um, their responses, that kind of stuff? So you have to decide how that's going to work as a group, actually. So you come with some some of the agreements and ask the group to um, also add to that if, you know, they feel there's something missing. Um, and then it always, it's always nice to have refreshments. <laughs> so <laughs> for some reason, every time we're eating and, you know, we're more relaxed and, you know, and, and it just makes for a good time. So you want to make it fun. So refreshment is a great way. Um, if you want music, you know, at the beginning, you know, whatever it takes to sort of uh, lighten the mood. And then um, if possible, you want to invite Bukola if she's, you know, available or she's close by or, you know, she can get there. Um, it's always um, an additional um, like a bonus to, to this, to actually have her in the room during the discussion. So, uh, and then you want to, there, you could also do group activities. I talk about um, these activities regarding characters in the book and their role in the story. So I'll give you an example of one of my character activity character that I have. So this one has to do with town home neighbors. That's the name of the characters. And um, so that the neighbors were concerned about loud arguments, baby crying, um, and then also noticed that Bukola was braiding very soon after birth, uh, after the birth of the baby. And then they also noticed paramedics visit to the home uh, once or twice. And Notice that Bukola was a non-English speaker, or at least she spoke with a very deep accent, um, indicating that she's not, you know, native to the area. Um, there was sometimes suspicion of abuse. So that's, those were the neighbors close to um, her home. So the activity is really looking at the characters and seeing what role they play in the story um, and how things could be, what they could have done differently to change the outcome of the story. So um, you could break people up in groups, groups of two or more to talk about these different characters and then decide, come up with something as a group in terms of what they would have done differently to to have a different outcome. Another character I have is uh, Tate's family, the, the uh, spouse in, in the story. So Taze has sisters living in Nigeria, 
they begged Bacola to have, he begged Bacola to have a child. I mean, they begged Bacola to have a child with the brother. And then they also helped spread rumors about Bacola that she was trying to put the brother's U.S. citizenship uh, status in jeopardy, which could have led to his deportation. Um, they also harassed Bukola's family in Nigeria at some point. So again, uh, just discuss some of the things that was said about the family in the book and say how the family could, what the family could have done differently to change the outcome of the story. So those are really, um, really, that's a really important activity. It sort of allows people to feel like they actually, um, they can actually, they, they are capable of mm -hmm. helping out so that um, to change the outcome of somebody's life or something that somebody might be going through. You are sort of empowering them to now take that situation and change it. So um, it's a good practice and it's something that hopefully they can walk away with thinking about how they could do it in real life. And so that's the activity. Um, Another thing could be afterwards, you guys could um, volunteer at a homeless shelter, um, just a way to give back and for people to feel like, you know, they're doing something. So after the meeting and the activities and discussion um, just ended, thank people for coming, for, you know, being vulnerable and providing their thoughts and feelings, um, you know, about something that's can be very emotional and and helping to learn how to change outcomes of other people's stories and hopefully they can um, continue they can keep an eye out and see and make sure that if there are people out there they can actually provide service not services but referrals to or give them some help in whatever ways they need. So those are strategies to use the in-person book. If you are interested in using it at all, um, contact Bukola at her Facebook page, um, mm -hmm. Bukola Oriola. Um. Yes, and you can, um, the book is online, actually it's on um, lulu.com and it's called Imprisoned. Thank you, Rita. <laughs> it's got in prison. I'm going to show you uh, what it looks like. This is what it looks like. And also, you can get it on Amazon. You know, it's also available on Amazon or Barnes and Nobles. You can download it on iTunes. So, um, the book is called In Prison The Travels of a Traffic Victim. And you can get your own copy. And please, if you have any question, feel free to. Um, ask me on Facebook or on Twitter through private message. If you know anyone that needs help, please contact me. There is help available. And I really want to thank Rita again for doing this second broadcast with us about, you know, the imprisoned book. The goal of writing this book, to tell you guys the truth, it's not easy for any survivor to come out and put their face to their story. It's a daily struggle, a daily fight that you have to live with for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So, but when I thought about how I was suffering and how I passed through different people, including clinics and people that I was braiding their hair and they couldn't help me because they didn't know what I was going through. I thought there was a day I need to write mm -hmm. a book by putting my face to the story in order for somebody else to get help. So the purpose for this book is to provide help mm -hmm. for someone who is out there still suffering, locked up either in domestic abuse or human trafficking. And I want you to know that human trafficking is dynamic in nature. So especially when it has to do with the family, if it's happening in the family, most of the time, you don't even know that Trafficking is what is going on. You just see domestic abuse, mm -hmm. but trafficking might actually be going on. So please, I want you to reach out for help. If you are somebody out there needing help, if you don't understand what you are going through and you know within your heart that you are in a bad situation 
or you've even thought about attempting suicide if you have thought about attempting suicide because you think you are in a bad situation you might be a victim of human trafficking so i encourage you today to reach out for help because help is available and if you want to get copies you know go on lulu.com and get copies if you contact me i'll be glad to provide you with uh, a copy and if you also want to get the workbook because now we are working on the workbook for those especially who are trying to do training to train their staff or train different groups in the community about the dynamics of human trafficking in the immigrant community so please uh, contact me Ambukola Oriola on Facebook Ambukola Oriola on Twitter and Ambukola Oriola on Periscope. So follow me to get more updates about this issue of human trafficking and domestic abuse in the immigrant community and how somebody can get help. So I will end it here now. Thank you so much for joining us. All my web viewers, thank you so much. And all those who go back to do the replay, God bless you all. Do have a nice weekend. My Periscope lovers, I call you from different countries that you are joining from. Thank you so much and God bless you. Bye-bye. And thank Bye. you again, Rita. <laughs> Thanks.